Hey dudes, welcome back to another Easy FPS Editor video. I know I've made this video twice already, but here's a third one. Another technique for turning 3D models into 2D sprites. A quick shout out to Pocket Manu. Manu? Manu? He told me about this program I'm going to show you now. And he's been working on Dungeon Crawler in this engine, and it's looking really cool. I can't wait to play this. But yeah, he told me about this program I'm going to show you now. And he's been really helpful with a lot of stuff. He also told me about if you're downloading models from Sketchfab, it's important to go to licenses and then tick these boxes here. These ones allow you to use the models commercially. It says commercial use is allowed, um, but these ones say no commercial use. So um, if you are going to use 3D models, it's safest to have these boxes ticked and then go and search for the model you want. Also make sure it's animated. And then yeah, if you find a model that has animations and it's within these licenses, then you're good to go. Let me show you the program quickly. So this is the program, it's called Sprite Builder and it's free to download on itch. I'll leave the link in the description. It's by Buckbeak and Ceylon Blocks. Thank you to them. And this is just another method of turning 3D models into 2D sprites. So it works with GLB format models. So when you go to Sketchfab, make sure you can download a GLB version of it. I have one ready here for you. I'll show you quick. Here we go. So I have this little zombie in GLB format. And if you don't see anything, um, don't, don't panic. Just scroll out. And there we go. Sometimes the models are really zoomed in. So there we go. There's our zombie looking hideous. You can check the different animations out down here. So once you have your model loaded into the Sprite Builder program, you can choose your resolution. So 64 by 64 might be a bit too small. This might be good, but 256 looks really nice. It gives it that retro look without making it look too crappy. Then you can scroll down, choose your render steps. This will determine how many frames you get. And these estimates are usually wrong. You'll see just now. Then you choose your output folder. Mine will go straight to the desktop in this Zombor folder. And then, I know it looks like it should be in this block, but even if you put them like here or here, it'll still work. So this border here is the canvas size. An important step is to make sure the model is standing at the bottom of the canvas. So you can imagine this is the ground in your project. So you need to make sure that your model is standing on the ground here. And then once you've chosen your resolution and how many sprites you'd like, just play around with this and see how many you get. Uh, we'll choose the idle animation and then we'll export the sequence. And that gave us 11 frames. So if you want to use all the frames that you get from here, just check out my previous video about FSM, which will allow you to use as many frames as you like. Um, but for today, we'll just use the default amount of frames that they give you here in enemy settings. We'll use this amount of frames for today, just for example. So I will maybe bring this down a bit and see if it makes a difference. Let's try six then. Then you can keep going back to your folder and deleting this one and I'll export again. Let's see how many frames we get now. They gave us eight frames. Yeah, I can work with that for now. And then we'll do the next animation, which is walk. Make sure he's walking towards you. And then we'll export that sequence. And then here with hit, we'll export this sequence as well. You can also have run if you want. Then we'll need the dead animation as well. And the attack animation. Cool, so all those animations are now ready. I might just do this one again. It seems like he falls a bit lower than this canvas here. So you can right click to bring him up. No, there should be good. So I'll just redo this one. It'll overwrite the old ones. There we go. And sorry if this video right now looks very low frame rate. It's just, it seems like when I record and then run this program at the same time, my laptop freaks out. I can't really handle it. So I'm going to close this now. And here we have all our sprites ready in 256 by 256. Cool. So now that you have all your sprites ready, 
we can add the enemy to our project. Go to Entity Settings, Enemy Settings, and then just name them down here. Zombor. Err. Sorry. Then we'll go to Import Sprites. And we'll just do the default way of adding enemies today. So it has very limited sprites that you can use. But if you want to use as many sprites as you like, just check out my previous FSM video. And that'll teach you how to add more frames than this. So you can make your animations look a bit more high quality using more frames. For now, we'll just do it this default way. So we'll add the idle frame first. Go to your folder where you exported your sequences. Here we go, Zombor. Idle. We'll take the first one. Then we need four moving frames. So walk. We'll take this one. And that one. That one. And this one. Then two attack frames. <laughs> Look at him. He's going to slap the shit out of you. So we'll take this first one and this one of him slapping you. Then two pain frames. This is him getting hit. Reacting to your hits. We'll take that and, and this one. Then three death sprites. We'll do this one. And this one. And that one. And then a corpse frame. So just him lying there. All dead like. Accept. Then you can adjust your settings. He does five damage since it's only a slap. And then you set your scale. Like maybe 0 0.4. 0.5 yeah and as you can see he's standing on the ground so that's the canvas size and he's touching the floor so it won't look like it, it won't look like he's floating when you add him now then you can accept go to entities and then place him here or wherever and let's see how it looks there he is and there's his slap And cool, because we put him at the bottom of the canvas, you can see he is touching the ground and not floating. So that's that's great. So yeah, there's our enemy. I don't have any weapons to hit him with right now. But you can go ahead and do that in your own project. This is just a quick tutorial on how to use Sprite Builder to turn 3D models into 2D sprites. Okay, before I end the video, I just opened up my other project here because I'm curious how his hit and death animations look. So let's see. He's attacking me. Okay. Let's see. There's the hit animation. I'm still working on this bow. You can see it's a work in progress. <laughs> the arrow is huge. Where's my sword? There we go. Cool. And there's his death animation. And he's on the floor and not floating. That's important too. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you need like some serious help, then join my Discord and I will chat with you there. And then you can show me the problem that you're having and I'll try my best to help you with my limited knowledge. And have a good day or night.